My name is Mary. I have a bus named Max. I have a dog named Cowboy. But Cowboy's gone. And I'm going to tell his story. I totally get it if you don't want to watch it, but I got to tell it because that's what I do. You know, that's how I cope. Might be different than how you would do it, but Cowboy's gone and I'm going to tell his story. Drinking it in while I'm drifting away. Breathing you out of my lungs. Up through the cosmos and out into space. You are my oxygen, but you're gone, gone, gone. When I met Cowboy, I had just lost my dog, Speck. We had been together for 10 years, and it might seem weird to some people that I was already looking on Pet Finder for another dog like a week after he was gone, but what can I say? I'm one of those people that is lost without a dog. So I looked. I wasn't expecting to find like the right someone, at least not right away, but there he was. He didn't look happy. He looked like he was just sort of, you know, getting through it, whatever it was. They were calling him Pee Wee. I took one look at him and I said, oh no, you are not Pee Wee. You are Cowboy. The listing said he was three and he'd been found loose on the streets of Temecula on New Year's Eve, probably running away from fireworks. I drove the two hours to meet him. When I walked him around the rescue lady's property on leash, he really didn't seem that into me. And I wasn't sure I was really into him either because this dog was not three. He was at least seven because he had that film, that hazy stuff on his eyes already. But two hours is a long way to drive to come back empty handed. I put him in the car. I was living in a loft above my store back then. It was obviously totally different from anything he was used to. Speck was really outgoing and social, and he would just greet all the customers when they came in, but Cowboy didn't want to leave his crate. He just put his head down and ignore the hustle and bustle, and then after closing, he would snuggle with me, but cautiously, like he was waiting for his real people to come get him. The turning point came when a friend of mine had a party that was too far up the coast for me to leave Cowboy alone, so... I bought this little collapsible crate and I figured I'd just let my shy little dog sleep in the corner during the party. When I opened the door in Oxnard with a collapsible crate and a leash under one arm and cowboy under the other, there were like 30 people milling around that were snacking off of a table laid out with appetizers. There were even three dogs there. So I put cowboy down really cautiously and I hovered, you know, just in case all hell broke loose or he got really freaked out. Instead, his eyes lit up, you know, his tail started going like a, like a windshield wiper and it didn't stop the whole time. He was running up to each person and saying hello like they were all long lost friends. And, you know, he was working that room, you know, with his smile and his soft eyes and he was getting all kinds of treats, you know, everybody was giving him treats off the table. He was the life of that party. It was the first time he actually showed me really who he was, which was as complex a being as any human I ever met. He was an introverted extrovert, a very emotional creature, moping around one minute, clowning around the next, and pretty soon he forgot about those other people and we bonded. He was mine. Anywhere I go, I swear I can feel you. Maybe there is nothing Here's Cowboy in his favorite Halloween costume. When I was fitting him, he, you know, put up with it politely. That was basically what Speck did. You know, he was okay with wearing a costume, but Cowboy actually loved it. The day of the parade, I've never seen a dog so proud wearing this thing, riding down the street in his wagon. You know, he won first prize, and it's not surprising at all. 
cowboy loved downtown Torrance where we lived too. He'd like to like walk down the avenues, you prance down there like the mayor, and he'd get fresh turkey every day from the sidewalk cafe. He'd get belly rubs and treats at the senior center. I don't know if you've ever read anything about how dogs over the centuries have learned to mimic human behavior, you know, like smiling and soft, loving eyes and putting their ears back. I mean, we don't put our ears back, but you know what I mean? They do these things, they're learned behaviors. It's not instincts. They've learned how to be endearing to us and Cowboy was great at it. You know, he was a gentle master manipulator with everybody else. People were always saying to me, oh, he's such a happy dog, and he was a happy dog when he was happy, but when he was sad, I knew it. When he was pissed off, I knew it. And it went both ways because he could read me really well. If I was sad, he'd start wagging that happy tail and jamming his head under my hand so that I had to pat him. He took good care of me, and that made me want to take care of him. When I would bring him food or water, he would always just like tap me on the hand with his nose, like one little tap. I learned to interpret it as thank you. I've been talking to your girl. Oh, you're the only one who knows. Oh, we were so close. Cowboy had been with me for about two years when I closed the store and we moved into our little bus and by then he already had some breathing problems that had originally been diagnosed as uh, allergies but then the vet decided he had pneumonia so he got treated for pneumonia see I always have made sure that my dogs have health insurance so that they can get whatever treatment they need so he got treated but it just would not go away eventually we left for the East Coast and all across America, Cowboy coughed and coughed and coughed. We parked the bus in my mother's driveway last August. And here there was no little town to be the mayor of. There was, you know, no coffee shop to give him turkey and it was isolated, you know, there was no center. Cowboy got cranky and I thought it was just because he didn't like it here, but pretty soon it became clear that the coughing was really affecting his breathing. I took him to Angel Memorial Hospital, which is the best animal hospital in the country, and they finally diagnosed him with collapsing trachea, which I kind of thought he had had all along. But they had a specialist there who could treat it, you know, who could put a stent in to open up the airway, and so things really looked good for Cowboy for a little while there, but then they evaluated him and they determined that he wasn't really a candidate for the stent because he had too much collapse, and he also had some, um, scarring in his lungs. A month or so ago, Cowboy tweaked an old injury in his neck and from there it just seemed to spread. You know, his back legs would collapse and he was uh, knuckling, you know, turning his paw like this and trying to walk on the top of his paw, which is a sign of a neurological problem. And I took him to Angel and um, he ended up in the hospital overnight twice. Last time was for three days. They sent him home with some medicine and the idea was get his breathing stronger and then we can figure out what else is going on, you know? And he seemed like he was getting better for a couple of days. He'd have six great hours. He'd be like literally like a puppy, like his old self. And then he'd just crash for an hour or two hours or however long. But then by like Sunday, the good periods in between were basically gone. I had made an appointment for pain management for Monday morning, <laughs> Sunday night, the 22nd. He just cried all night. He was in so much pain. He just cried all night. The pain doctor checked him out and she told me that the pain in his neck was bad, but that it was nothing compared to the breathing. She said to me, imagine you're drowning, right? And you're under the water and every now and then you struggle up and you grab a breath and you, have to come back down, you know, so you're living for those little breaths and you're just drowning. All day you're drowning. For my other animals, when the time for them has come, you know, they've always really let me know really clearly. Like they stop eating, they look you in the eye and you just 
you just know, you know, that the act of love, the right thing to do is going to be to help them go. And Cowboy's such a communicator, I just wanted him to tell me. I wanted him to be really clear, you know, but he's still wagging his tail. He's still taking treats from my hands, you know. I didn't think I was going to be able to do it. This little tail is wagging. And then I realized he was wagging it for me. You could tell I was sad, so he was holding on for me. I wish I could tell you that he gave me that little nose tap on the hand to say thank you, to tell me that I did the right thing, but he didn't. I sat with him for a long time after he was gone. I could still feel him in the room. I still feel him in the room. We didn't even know each other four years and he's tattooed on my heart. Drinking it in while I'm drifting away. Breathing you out of my lungs. Up through the cosmos and out into space. You are my oxygen, but you're gone, gone. That last picture came from the hospital. They sent it to me because Cowboy was smiling at everybody. It's not his normal smile. You can tell he's scared, but he's smiling because he knows if he smiles, they'll be happy. And if they're happy, they'll give him more treats. And if they give him more treats, it'll be that much easier to get through the hospital. And the hospital is hard. And life is hard. And Cowboy figured out that if you wag your tail and you look at it through soft, loving eyes, it gets a lot easier and that is corny as fuck and I'm sorry but it's true but I'm gonna stop there cuz I'm messing this all up I'm not saying it right that's cowboy's story Anywhere I go, I swear I can feel you maybe there is nothing I can do I've been talking to your ghost oh, You're the only one who knows oh, We were so close Almost, almost did and I promise I'll be back to normal on the next one. Thanks cowboy.